Okay. So we are back in action with our ongoing discussion about uh, religion and God and things. And in the time that I had where I wasn't making a video, where I was working on the video, I had this really, really interesting revelation. Turns out that I am, in fact, the greatest quarterback who ever lived. The greatest of all time. Yeah, it's true. It's true. I was watching a, 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 a game with Joe Montana of the 49ers. Now, if you're thinking, you mean Tom Brady, uh, no. I said, Joe Montana of the 49ers, formerly of the 49ers, the greatest quarterback of all time prior to me. And I'm watching a game with Joe Montana. And now he's looking, he's looking far downfield. He's got, a, he's got a receiver. He's trying to, he's, he's looking to connect. And he's, he doesn't see that there is a guy just out of his line of sight coming to take him down, coming to sack him. So he's looking for this receiver far downfield. And I'm like, Joe, Joe, turn, turn. You're about to get sacked. Turn your head, look. He doesn't see it. Bang, he goes down. Now, I being the greatest quarterback of all time, replay it in my imagination. And guess what happens when I replay it? I turn, and I see the guy coming. And I go, oh, there's a guy coming. And I throw a quick little bucket pass, pass boom. It's connected. It's, it's, it's complete. The guy, the guy, you know, I miss. The guy misses me. He hits me, sure, he connects, but I've already released because I saw him coming. I turned and saw him coming. Unlike... Joe Montana, proving absolutely unequivocally that I am the greatest quarterback of all time. Because I saw it, and Joe Montana didn't. Now, I'm being a little silly, but I'm illustrating a point. What is the difference between those two scenarios? Well, the difference is obvious. One is in my imagination, and the other is in reality and actually happened. So one is in my imagination, the other one was in execution. It is really, 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 really easy to sit back and imagine that you are smarter than God and you have created the perfect world. And if only God were as smart as you, he could have created the perfect world too. The problem with this fallacy, let's call it the stoner atheist fallacy, Okay, in other words, it is really, really easy for the atheist to do a couple of bong hits and go, you know what? I'm smarter than God. And I go, why? How so? I can't believe that. That's amazing. Yeah, it is. Check it out. I just created a world in my imagination where there's no sorrow, no sickness, no suffering, and no death. Wow, how'd you do that? I just invented it off the top of my head. The problem is, that is a world in imagination. The world we lived in is a world in execution. It is a world in reality. Now let's pretend, for argument's sake, that I am an atheist. Yeah, let's pretend, for argument's sake. What would that mean? First and foremost, that would mean that I am completely gay for science. We are both. We're gay for science. We love science. Oh my God, I love science. I can't get enough science. I can't wait to get home and make love to science. I'm so gay for science. Well, in order for science to be true, science is the investigation of the actual, of the material, of the substantial, of the things that actually are. And the only reason why science works is because it is an investigation of laws and, and of, of laws and precepts and principles that are actually there to be discovered and found. In other words, there are laws of logic and there are laws that govern life. And they are there to be discovered, cause and effect, things like that. That's why science works. Because we the atheists can now investigate and find laws that are already in place so we can understand the process by which things work. Now, as far as we know, those laws are inviolate which means they cannot be altered, or they wouldn't be laws. They cannot be tweaked, or they wouldn't be laws. In other words, they are inviolate. They cannot be altered in any way, shape, or form, or you do not have life. They are the pre preconditions of life. Well, that sort of dramatically limits the possibilities of the real world. 
it completely and utterly limits the possibilities of the real world according to what is actually here in the real world. It sounds like a simple concept, but it's actually true. Let's say for argument's sake, um, I am right. There is a God who created this world. Okay, but let's also say for argument's sake that that God wrote the laws and the things that sustain life wrote the cause and effects of like, you know, how a cloud gets rain, for example. Any sort of scientific process that you can examine or investigate is based on cause and effect and laws and principles that cannot be altered or else you do not have life. That dramatically limits the possibilities of the real world. Dramatically limits the possibilities of the real world to what you see in front of you. See, the atheists and I kind of agree on a couple of things. We both agree that this world is imperfect. But we also both agree that it could not, potentially could not have been formed any other way than what we see right now. With the atheist, it's more obvious. Why? Why? Because if this world is a cosmic accident, then it spontaneously occurred out of nothing, ex nihilo, as you would say, so it spontaneously occurred out of nothing, this is the only possible way it could have formed only possible way. If it's a random occurrence, if it's an accident, if it occurred out of nothing, this is the only possible way the world could be. Now, I say that it was created by a perfect being. This is also, mysteriously enough, the only possible way he could have created the world, as it is, because it's not a world of imagination. It is a world in reality. Hence, it is based on principles, laws, precepts, Preconditions that are inviolate, because if you tweak them out, you don't have life. So whether it's a cosmic accident or whether it's God-ordained and God-breathed, you still have the same problem. There is no other way it could have happened. Now, I'm not 100% sure that that's right, but it, it sounds simpler than it is. It's actually fairly, fairly complicated, and if you think about it really deeply, it seems to be 100% true that there is no other way that this world could have been created based on the fact that it is it functions on laws and precepts that have to be true in order for the world to function, like 2 plus 2 equals 4. You can't make a world where 2 plus 2 equals 3. It doesn't work. It's logically impossible. Well, that dramatically reduces the possibilities of the world. Dramatically. Now, if I'm right, and a divine being created this world, a perfect being, he created a reach-around. He created an imperfect world with a reach-around. Somewhere in the history of this imperfect world, he introduced himself to the world as himself. So that you can believe on him and go with him to a version of this world that has been perfected. Been perfected. For you. Ahead of time. But again, there's a precondition there. Because in order for it to be a perfect world, he had to do something to himself on a cross that you barely understand, but it had to occur. So that the imperfections in our nature could be dealt with successfully to his satisfaction. So we could then enter a perfect world with a clean slate and live there forever and ever and ever and ever. See, the world as it is, we both agree, is imperfect. The only difference in our concept is that I think that it was, I am, I am positing that it was created by a perfect being. A perfect being still could not have created it any other way than it is. Because it has, it, it, it functions according to concepts and precepts and, that are built into it. They cannot be violated. So whether it's an accidental world or a created world, it's still going to look exactly the same. And it's not going to function any differently because the functionality of it is built into the design. I don't know if that makes complete sense in how I explained it, but it's actually a sound concept. So that's the difference. So we are back in action, and I expect a novel and a good one with a beginning, middle, and end and some salient points. And we're back. Thank you, Gary. Thank you for your participation. I admit, it's a brilliant theory. Thank you very much. I thank you ahead of time. Yes, I agree. It is very, very, very brilliant. Thank you.